this is not a thing. And it's such not a thing that it's hard to even argue against because it's so not a thing, I don't even know how to tell you that it's not a thing. It's just not a thing. Does that make sense? What's going on everybody? Welcome in, I'm Dr. Jim Cellini. I'm a board certified practicing veterinary neurologist. I've been asked by a couple of people over the last couple of months to give my thoughts regarding the animal cracker. He is a chiropractor named Dr. Doug. He's got a very popular YouTube channel. He posts a lot of videos of animal chiropractic and I saw one in particular called The Completely Lame Dog Runs Again. And whenever I see a French Bulldog in the hands of a chiropractor, as a veterinarian and as a veterinary neurologist, I get very nervous about this, no pun intended. So on today's episode, I'm going to react to this video and give my thoughts. And I just wanna provide a little bit more facts to this sort of a situation. Before I get into that, guys, please, if you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button to help the channel out, help it grow. I wanna get this information to as many people as I can. And let's get started with Completely Lame Dog Runs Again. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks for watching my videos. Do you want to work together today, Lola? Do you want to... How do you feel about me working with you? Now, right off the bat, I, I do like how he is very slow and reassuring. And this is something that I was taught and brought up to do before all of my examinations as well from Dr. De La Hunta, who I've mentioned in a video before. He mentions this in his book, to be slow, say their name a few times, introduce yourself, give them some head pats, that sort of thing, before you get into examining them. This I like. Well, you were telling me, but, but, right. but sure. tell them too. So basically on Monday, I took her to the vet and uh, they initially told me that uh, I should obtain it, or have a good MRI because this is an early onset of uh, IBDD. All right, so that's intervertebral disc disease, um, arthritis, spinal It's not changes. the same thing as arthritis. Intervertebral disc disease refers to degeneration of the intervertebral disc. French Bulldogs have a very high frequency of what's called a chondrodystrophy mutation. This imparts basically a early onset degeneration of their disc. Their discs dry out and desiccate. They're not able to maintain their normal hydrated chemistry. And this makes them friable and prone to herniate. So this is different from arthritis. The edge of the vertebra lips, they call it lip because it like lips out, where they should be nice little squares and little boxes. It'll have edges and protrusions that are already changing. So this is not the same thing. What he's describing is what's called spondylosis. This is a bone spur, a bony proliferation on the bottom or ventral surface of the vertebrae where they try to touch each other. That is not the same thing as intervertebral disc disease. That is an entirely different thing. And they are dealing with gravity, like we all are, but they just know that that's wrong if I knuckle them down. So knuckle them down is they, you turn their knuckles down. And then I can do this side and right away her brain goes, uh-uh. What he's trying to describe is proprioception. And this is spatial awareness in a dog. When you're doing this test, what you're trying to figure out is, is there something in the pathway between the peripheral nerves that are sending signals up to the spinal cord of the leg you're testing, and then up the spinal cord to the brain and what's called the somesthetic cortex, and then also the motor signal that comes down to replace the paw. That entire circuit with each leg is what you are assessing. So if a dog is delayed in any of these limbs, that tells us that anywhere in the circuit there could be a problem, and the rest of your neurologic exam is usually then hone in, is it in the brain, is it in the neck, is it in the back, is it in the peripheral nerve, and then go from there. Right. So that was four days ago. Four days ago. She would, would have failed the proprioception test. Correct. Correct. So. Do you remember which side was worse? Now, I don't know why he's asking the owner and not getting results and reading the records from the vet that referred this dog to him assuming that happened, he should be basing that line of questioning off of that information rather than trying to ask the owner to recall all of these subtleties of a neurologic exam performed by somebody else. Do you remember it was like, would it stay there for a second or two? No, I, she had no response at all. Yeah. I had to push her in the stroller because she couldn't, she wasn't standing. But if she's gone from unable to stand up to standing up and I think walking based on what I'm seeing her do on the table, why are we even pursuing more treatment for her at this point? If she's already made such a big turnaround before now, it doesn't make any sense to me. I, yesterday, 
I received in the mail a uh, high dose of CBD solve, mm -hmm. and I applied it transtopically on my ears to apply some of the inflammation, and she's just been standing, and it's working. Now, you see the owner mentioned there that he applied a topical CBD. CBD has been shown to have some benefits both for epilepsy and for joint pain in dogs. It may have helped with some of her discomfort, but I think what is more likely is that she simply recovered on her own following what we think might have been a disc herniation, though we don't know for sure. And this gets to one of my biggest problems with all of these chiropractic and alternative treatment videos on animals that you see all over YouTube and other social media. We don't ever have a definitive diagnosis in these pets. Everything operates without a definitive diagnosis in these cases that I see. Dogs never have an MRI or a CT, and we don't know exactly what the problem is. So from the get-go, without a diagnosis, we are just shooting in the dark and giving every sort of treatment we possibly can. And if dogs get better while we're giving all of these alternative treatments, it's very easy to say, oh, well, this one worked if it happened to line up timing-wise. What I think probably happened is this dog herniated a disc and just simply got better with time. That does happen more than 50% of the time. All right, let's keep watching the video. Oh, you're such a cute dog. That's why everybody loves you. We're all fed, and I know she's yeah, ready. She's really a good dog. So I'm checking the atlas first, because the atlas will affect all the way down to the, sometimes affect lameness issues. That is incorrect. So there's nothing in the atlas that would create a lameness. And this is speaking from a neuroanatomic standpoint. So the atlas is the first cervical vertebrae. And if there's a problem in and around the first cervical vertebrae or first cervical spinal cord segment, C1, there is not going to be a lameness from that. Now, he may be speaking in more common terms because he's trying to connect with the owner, I get that. But I think it's important to make this discrepancy if we're going to make a professional kind of you know chiropractic video. A problem in the high cervical spinal cord from a neuroanatomic and physiologic standpoint really cannot create a lameness. What you would see is an ataxia and a paresis affecting one or more limbs. That is different from a lameness. A lameness results from a nerve issue or a problem affecting the bones, joints, tendons, what have you, of a particular limb. That's a different thing. And a cervical spinal cord problem at C1 does not create a lameness. In her case, it went posterior superior, and I'm gonna laterally flex a little bit to the right and bring it. I didn't get it all. Got it. I have absolutely no idea what he is trying to do. I gotta keep in mind that he's a chiropractor, so he's probably thinking that C1, the atlas, is somehow malaligned, and he's trying to realign the atlas, or C1. But everything that this owner described involved a back leg issue, most likely a lower spinal cord problem causing those symptoms. There's really nothing in this dog's history or the owner's description that would tell you that it has a neck problem. Furthermore, I don't think what he's doing there really realigned anything. I, I, I can't imagine how in doing that motion would realign the atlas. And I also don't know how he's diagnosing this dog even has a malaligned atlas because the dog has no symptom or history consistent with a cervical spinal cord problem. The other thing that's a little bit concerning to me here too is that he's making little manipulative movements in a French Bulldog cervical spine. And I don't think it's a good idea to be moving their spine and doing these manipulations to their vertebrae because I don't think we have any sort of imaging diagnosis on this dog. So I don't think you should be operating like this given the risk that we know French Bulldogs have of a disc herniation and without proper imaging like CT or MRI or at least spinal x-rays. So that one moved. Were you able to hear that a little bit? It clicked, a little click. Not loud. Let's let her think about that for a second. Okay. So I'm gonna just back off and give her a second to think about that. How did that feel? Hmm? Now, I see no difference in this dog before and after that treatment. Okay, the dog looks exactly the same to me. This, we can continue. So now I'm checking the neck for something I missed, but I didn't miss anything up there, so that's really good. Okay, so now I'm coming down. I can't see how he would have felt a malaligned C1 and now all of a sudden it feels aligned. I, I just can't, I cannot even begin to envision how what he did changed or let alone fixed anything, but. Lumbars, so seven cervicals, 13 thoracics, seven lumbars. 
and this is where is the thoracolumbar junction, and it's a very um, stress point. It's a big stress point for quadrupeds. And this one's a little tight. So I definitely want to do this one. So I, you could hold up by the head. One more. Good girl. Okay. Again, I don't see how this could possibly do anything for a dog. I think you can make an argument that by doing a manipulation like this, you stand a chance of creating more of a herniated disc, pushing more disc material out. You also saw the dog wince there in the last one, which tells me that that might be a little bit of a painful spot for the dog. So for that reason, I never recommend this. So I have no idea what this instrument could possibly be doing to help this dog. I mean, you can see she doesn't really like it very much. She's kind of looking back and saying like, stop doing that, that sort of behavior. Um, I think it's like doing a quick little tapping motion on top of her spine, but there's really, I, I don't see how that could help literally anything that would have caused her, her clinical symptoms previously. Um, I just have no idea what that is or how it could work. I can't even envision how that could possibly help. Up here, and this usually makes the dog yelp a little bit. Okay. I'm not saying she is, she seems pretty chill, but when I pull this, because it's under oh, here, right. where it's tender anyway, uh, they go, you know, or they do something. So I'm just letting you know that okay. could happen, but it's worth getting because sure. it's tilted. Sure. I, I would say, you know, if a dog is yelping every time that he does that, my assumption would be that it hurt. It's okay. Here we go. It's okay. Got it. Well, she did not seem to like that very much. And this is where I get a little bit concerned with these chiropractic videos online. The patients seem to be having pain responses a lot of the time. And I just don't know if we're causing pain for any sort of benefit here. I, I, I'm very skeptical of that. And what I'm doing is I'm checking these points and this side kind of bent down a little bit. And this is what it looks like. So, Here's the, the dog's back right here. And this part here tilted forward. So I got under it here and flicked it back. You cannot tell me that by flicking the pelvis one time like he did, all of a sudden this dog's pelvis is realigned. If it's tilting forward, simply flicking it back is not going to realign it. It's tilting forward probably because this dog may have residual neurologic dysfunction that's very subtle causing her right back leg to be a little weaker and she's kind of dipped down a little bit. But flicking the pelvis back is not going to permanently change that alignment. That's happened because of a neurologic problem. So again, none of this really makes sense from strictly just an anatomical standpoint. You don't have to do much. I'm gonna just pick the both legs up in the air and look down at the feet. And do you see how the left leg is pulling short here on camera? Wish you could see this rough. Oh, I, I can see it. But the left leg's pulling short. I don't think there's really any reason to believe one leg is shorter than the other. Like, that's that's not a thing. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know where he's even getting that from, and he's not holding them equidistant and in the same way. I, that just doesn't jive with me. And so that sometimes comes from the neck, and it sometimes comes from the pelvis. But no, again, a problem from the neck there's no anatomical explanation. There's no neuroanatomical explanation for why a problem in the neck would cause one leg to be shorter or held shorter than the other. That just makes no sense whatsoever. Let's check it again. There's nothing about this instrument that will help a nerve connection with anything. Almost, we got a closer, but this is not a scientific, oh my gosh, this is, this is like, I mean, there's so much variability in how you could be holding the dog's legs like that. You could easily just hold it slightly differently in one leg to demonstrate one being shorter and then improving. Okay, go to the right, and that makes it worse. Go to the left, and that evens it. Good. So that's where it is. No, I don't think this is actually happening. I think the dog's just moving their legs or he's moving the dog's legs. Like when a dog's head and neck moves left and right, that doesn't shorten or elongate one of the back legs. Like, please show me an anatomical explanation for this. Like, this is not a thing. 
And it's such not a thing that it's hard to even argue against because it's so not a thing, I don't even know how to tell you that it's not a thing. It's just not a thing. Does that make sense? Back. So there's something up here still. I think it's right here. It's a different misalignment. Is there an explanation for why you could take that instrument and go da 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 to the back of the, uh, that knob on the back of your head, how that could possibly elongate and realign your back legs to be straight again and, and symmetrical? But how could that possibly happen? Now take the, well, first of all, it's even. The legs are even, but turn the face all the way to the right. I mean, it still makes it worse. Okay, so we're missing something. I think what we're missing is an actual diagnosis on this dog. And I think what we're missing is some sort of evidence-based practice. And I think most importantly, what we're missing on this dog is to take a step back and say, does this dog really need any actual treatment? Because like I mentioned earlier, she's gotten better already. Good girl. Good girl. Okay, let's check the legs again. Almost there, but not right. All right, they're even now. Do you see that? The struggle I'm having is that there's so much wrong about this all and incorrect in regards to the thought process, the methodology, the logic behind it. It's hard to know where to begin. There's that muscle knot right here. So put your fingertip in here, and right there is a tight muscle. Do you feel it? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna work on that for a minute. Got it. Let me do both sides. In my experience, when I see animal chiropractors, both in real life and on social media, they often find any reason to do a treatment and they see things that I'm highly skeptical are even there. He's in here, this fear, feel how this is all bumped up. So really soft hands. Do you feel how that's yes. bumped right there? I think he's actually feeling the ribs. Like he's just feeling the dog's ribs. The bumps are just the ribs. Ribs are normal anatomy in case you didn't know. She's moving well. This is what I'm saying, like, um, I'm telling him one day that doc, he, he, doctor, I mean, he's urging me to leave right away and schedule an emergency MRI for purposes of performing the spinal IVDD surgery. Oh, to get the surgery, too. Right away. So, you know, who knows what Lola's future is, or my future, or your future, no, no, but me. this is not a dog that needs surgery today. That's what I was okay. <laughs> You know, I'm trying to always be politically correct and diplomatic, but this dog doesn't look like it's ready for surgery today. <laughs> correct. So it's really common in these types of videos from chiropractors especially to paint veterinarians in an incorrect light. Not even a bad light, just an incorrect light. Both of these guys have the benefit of hindsight going on. We don't know if five days ago Lola was unable to stand up then that vet had every right to recommend an emergency consultation, MRI, and a possible surgery if she had a herniated disc. That is what is indicated when dogs become acutely or suddenly unable to stand and close to paralyzed or fully paralyzed. Now, five days later, Lola's gotten better. And just like he said, we don't know what the future holds. Well, that vet didn't know what the future holds either. And they were erring on what is the best practice and the gold standard recommendation for Lola. We see numerous circumstances where dogs don't get better. In fact, they get worse after something like what Lola had happened to a few days prior. And if that vet had not recommended those diagnostics and that gold standard treatment, and then Lola got worse, and then potentially even died from a disc herniation, which certainly can happen with French Bulldogs, look up myelomalacia, what would we have been saying about this vet? So I think this is a disservice to the veterinarian who took care of Lola. And I don't think they should be really commenting on prior assessments and painting a veterinarian in a bad light for recommending the best thing for the dog. Hey, come back to your bed. <laughs> One more thing, please note that we're only now at the end of the video after the treatment seeing Lola walk. We did not see Lola walk and observe her gait before this treatment started. Oh, no. Five days after lameness, right? Five days after so she's still a little unstable. She's not totally bad. 
Now, what I would recommend is that if Lola is only a few days away from potentially herniating a disc, she should be very strictly confined and rested to a small area or a crate, basically trying to mimic bed rest and not allowed to do these types of exercises for fear that with more activity, she might herniate more disc through a current tear in her disc. She might worsen her injury or relapse. So I think it's not the best practice to go let her run around the clinic like this. We typically recommend confining them and resting them very strictly, at least for a couple of weeks to let them heal after an injury like this. Now at the very end here, Lola watches as her owner then gets an adjustment, which I can't comment on. I'm obviously not a human physician. My personal opinion is that this is just really weird. Like I, I don't know if people should be allowed to practice any sort of medical treatment on animals and people within the next within a few minutes of each other but that's just kind of an opinion of mine to summarize this i don't recommend chiropractic ever for pets i don't think it has any benefit and i think all it does is create added risk and no benefit and so i don't recommend it i especially don't recommend it in dogs like french bulldogs and dachshunds and other breeds who we know are overrepresented for chondrodystrophy and intervertebral disc disease the reason being manipulation of the spine stands a chance to cause or worsen a current herniation. And I've seen too many videos where these dogs suffer pain responses and stress of little to no benefit. And I do not believe chiropractic really does anything for small animals. I think chiropractors operate in the gray area of placebo and they benefit from that placebo as well as the ignorance of the population at large and knowing better and how to suss out what's BS and what's not. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Again, don't mind, leave a comment below, hit that like and subscribe button. Let me know if you want me to react to any other videos uh, like this or any other vet videos in general. And I'll see you guys next time. Appreciate it.